David, dynamic blocks were introduced in AutoCAD 2006, right. right? And hopefully people are using them by now. But there are a lot of changes that have been made in the last couple of releases, and especially in 2010. So two big things in 2010, actually three. First of all, the same geometric and dimensional constraints that I can use in my drawing, I can use with dynamic blocks. Now, I've got to be careful. If I want those kinds of constraints to be applied to the block geometry, I've got to use the tools that are made for applying those constraints to the, to the dynamic block. I can't use the ones that are on the parameters tab in the ribbon bar. That way but the grips are available. Inside and the dynamic block environment. The other thing that I can do now with dynamic blocks is I can test the block. So before I had to make the changes to the block, save the block, in, then leave the block editor, go back in the drawing, insert an instance of the block, and test the block. And generally I'd find out that I'd forgotten to do something and then I'd have to go all the way back into the block editor. So now I can do everything inside the context of the block editor and there's a little test block button. It opens up an instance of that block right in the block editing environment. I can flex the block, make sure it does what I want. Isn't that one of the best little hidden oh, gems? That is, that is the greatest <laughs> hidden gem. I, yeah. I use that all the time now. The other thing that I really like is the fact that I can now create a block lookup table. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually create all of my various dimensional parameters inside of an Excel spreadsheet and then cut and paste from Excel back in and create that block lookup table inside of AutoCAD. Then I can test the block and then when I know that everything's working properly, save the block and put that block into my drawing. And this way you can have your block insertions be predefined to certain sizes and shapes. Exactly. I mean there's a simple one, one example would be like a, a, a wide flange beam. I mean there's hundreds of different beam sizes that control the flange width, the, the height, the depth, the radius. And I can have all, I can actually go in and it's pretty easy to, in Excel, look at the old American Steel Institute handbook and fill all those properties into various cells of my spreadsheet and then just cut and paste from the spreadsheet into the block table. And then your users edit that block instance and there you can even confine them, right, so that they can only select values that adhere to those standards. Right. So right. great, great benefit. And even going back to uh, previous releases with blocks, like in um, with the 2006, with the dynamic blocks that we introduced, introduced in AutoCAD 2006, being able to align or control visibility of different geometries. Oh, well, within sure. The block well, you've, you've still got the same things with visibility control. So now the beauty here is that one block will be able to replace literally hundreds of blocks in a block library. I mean, you no longer need to create a block for every different size. One block can serve all purposes. You don't even need to have a different block for elevation, uh, plan, and section views. One block can have all of, all of those different capabilities by just using the visibility control. So easier to manage, easier to use. Yes. And the easier to manage is one of the, I, I think, is the biggest issue. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. Thanks, David. Well, you're welcome.